Hey there, Simone here with Bulletproof Business Growth. As always, with some ideas and insights, what to pay attention to when you are growing and scaling your business. Now, we've been talking a lot about what kind of tools are the right tools to make your team produce more profits because that's what we want out of them. And of course, hiring, getting the right people on the team and optimizing the team that you have is number one. So you want to optimize the organization, the people who you already have, and then keep hiring for better. So I just came out of uh, teaching a four-day workshop that was awesome, was amazing. I'll include the link for you if you wanted to go check out the replays if you weren't able to be there this week. And I wanted to share with you the piece that we talked about today because this is truly how you hire better, retain better, um, grow better, and make sure that when you're making that significant investment that the new person that you're hiring, they can hit the ground running and they can produce value much, much faster than ordinarily possible. So we'll start with number one, which is optimizing the and up-leveling the team that you have. And then we talk about hiring better because, you know, when you think about this, when it's time to hire, when it's time to hire an essential to fill an essential role, right? How do we get better and better at doing this? Because it's scary. You're going to invest a lot and you're going to give these people a lot of leeway to bring results and will they, right? So one important question to ask is if it's a role that you've filled before and somebody leaves, what did we learn, right? Because that'll give you really good understanding of, hey, was the problem them or is the problem really you? And if the problem was them, hey, you know what? The faster you can say goodbye, the faster you can learn from that, the better. But if the problem was you, you don't want to keep repeating the same mistakes. So this is really important where you up-level your leadership techniques, your leadership capacity and skills. So here's something that most people don't really want to hear. HR statistics say that oftentimes it really takes three to four hires to find the right fit that lasts. So, and we all know, right? Mishiring is one of the biggest costs in business and you must go through the process. Two of our amazing clients, Jim and Ash, who were on the workshop with us, um, we had a little interview and they were sharing their story about how they just hired this sales team and sales leader who they trusted, they thought really knew what to do. They came in, they hoped they would come in and produce, produce amazing results. And that's not what happened. They came in, they were disjointed. There wasn't a good plan and good oversight and things fell apart. And it took them a good six months back in their momentum and their progress. And which seems like, a failure, right? But when I asked Jim, hey, would you would you do it again? Do you still consider this a win? He said, absolutely. What we learned from actually, we knew in theory what to do, but what we actually learned from practicing this and going through this process and realizing where our holes were and where we needed to ask more questions and put our processes that we know in place to really work we couldn't have done that without actually going through it. So it is, uh, you know, kind of gut wrenching and heartbreaking when you are in that place. But this is something you can't compromise here. So when we look at the team, we have to say, hey, only A players are allowed. And part of that is addressing the team you already have. Because when you hire new people who are supposed to be your A players into an existing team, that's not A players, well, there's a big disconnect right there. So we have to start by up-leveling the existing team. Now, there's a process called top grading that nobody loves very much, and you have to do it. <laughs> so what that means is you are looking at your team, and you have to rate them and go, okay, where are they on this scale? We want to divide it into who are our 20% amazing A player rock stars. We love, we always want to keep them. Who are our 60% in the middle who are going to go either way? And who are our 20% at the bottom, which we need to upgrade? And 
let me be very clear. When you go through that process, those 20% at the bottom, they're most likely your C and D players. And the gap is far too big for you to help them become an A player. It's going to take too much of your time, your money, your energy, your resources to get them from C or D to being an A. So you have to let them go. And I'm not saying fire everybody tomorrow. It's not about throwing the baby out with the bathwater. You can take your time, but you have to make a plan around this. Because if you don't have a plan, if you don't put this on your calendar, if you don't start the process, you never will. Now, I, a lot of times I talk to people and they're really proud to tell me that they have really low churn, that their turnover is basically non-existent, which is actually not a great thing. It means that you have a stagnant team that's kind of leveled out. And a lot of times it happens when you have people for a long time and you don't have these practices in place that we're talking about right now. They're getting stagnant. They're um, not producing anymore. They're not pushing the envelope. And here you go. You have a team that's sort of asleep. So you want to make sure that you... This is not about making the popular decision. This is about making the right decision. So, but just for a minute, going back to the churn part, right? So your healthy amount of churn would be somewhere between 10 and 20%. And in the beginning, you're probably looking more at 20 because now we have to clean house. So as you do this and you iterate this a few times, you're going probably down to a, a lower 10 minus percent. So that's the expectation that you should have as a business owner. Now, like I said, it's not an easy process. It's not a fun process. It's not like what anybody wants to do, but this is your job as the CEO. This is not about... You being liked, this is about you being respected and making the right decisions. You know, the, the focus here is you're going to hire great people. You're going to give them opportunities. You're giving them tools. You're giving them leadership. And then also part of that is protecting your business and making sure that you can grow it. So you're hiring for partnership. You're giving them the right tools and understanding and then you make the right decisions because when you don't, it hurts everybody. Of course, it hurts you because you now have to deal with this person. And this is for a lot of you that sucks up a ton of your bandwidth. Just thinking about this one problem person or the multiple problem people. And um, of course, it hurts the company because they're not producing the outcomes that you need. And it really hurts the rest of your team because they have to pick up the slack. They have to deal with those people who are not the A players. And they're also going to wonder, you know, why the heck is, is the boss not making a better decision here because this is not working. So to start this, you have to be hiring ready and then you have to hire right. So hiring ready includes everything that you hear me talk about on this show where you have to have an incredible crystal clear vision in place that helps everybody understand where the company is going and how they're a part of it, where you have really good annually, annual and quarterly planning. So everybody understands what the priorities are, how they're shifting and how they're executing on that and what they own and then having really good communication. And then of course, as a foundation setting the culture that the high performance culture that will kind of hold all this, right? So the goal here is, is that everybody succeeds, everybody grows, everybody makes money and you profit because that's what a healthy business does. So you have all your pieces put in place so that you are ready to support them to be successful. And look, I mean, hiring is not what it used to be. Like forget everything that you know. Because you need to put a lot more effort and a lot more time and a lot more intention into this for it to work. So one place you can start is your job description. So because nobody cares about what a job description generally looks like is this like bulleted list of tasks. And honestly, nobody cares about tasks. They're, you know, these bullet points that are disconnected. 
And nobody understands how these disconnected bullet points actually contribute to company strategy, which is what they need to understand so they can make good decisions without you. So these job descriptions, they should start with your outcome. So what results are they responsible for? Like it's not about tasks, it's about results. So that's kind of like the vision of their role. And if you follow us at all and you have kind of your understanding the way that we always approach anything, it's you always start with the vision because it's your outcome. And then we need to also support that with what's the mindset, the behavior that will support them in getting this done. So you need this mindset and this behavior so that they, they can actually deliver. Now, you know, I hear this a lot that you have people who are good at doing the tasks and that they love doing the tasks, but they're not connected and committed to producing the outcome because the tasks are disconnected if they don't understand where that actually goes and what's important to keep in mind and drive towards. They're not going to be the ones that help you produce more profits and that's what they're on the, on the team for. That's why they're part of your companies. So they might love the work, but are they account accountable for producing the results? So this is all we're talking about and this is all you must focus on with your existing team and 100% with any new hiring conversation. Because if you talk to them and they love doing the thing, but they don't really want to be responsible for how the thing actually produces profit, this is not the right fit. You're all small business owners. This needs to be a focus on your team. This needs to be the conversation you have with them all the time. How are they contributing to profits? Not just revenue, but profits, right? So make sure that every single person that you hire, that they know how, you know, doing the thing is only important if the thing produces profits, because otherwise we've missed the mark. We've missed half of the process. So that piece. Then the second piece is they need a repeatable workflow that gets them to success. So this is their pathway that helps them get the thing done in a successful way. So the way we teach that is you have to have really good SOPs in place that you don't necessarily have to write. You can have your rock stars write them, but everybody needs to document workflows so that everybody understands how do we get from A to Z. But that's only half the battle because there's this doesn't really work for a lot of the stuff you do in your business. There's SOPs for just like the standard stuff, standard operating procedures, right? Standard stuff. But then for the more high level stuff for where you have to actually think and be strategic and make sure that things work together and you have to connect the dots. Now we need a really good plan and that plan is outcome based. That plan is specific. It's smart. It's measurable because if you can't measure it, how do you know it's going to be successful, right? So got to make sure it's very, very specific. So you need those SOPs and you need to make sure that there's a plan that helps you execute it. So they get to follow this. And when they have something really good that they can follow, they can be productive much sooner than you think. So the common assumption is for somebody to really hit their stride is like four to six months. But if you have all these pieces in place that I'm talking about, you can get it to down to four to six weeks. So when you're hiring a new person and they have to build this pathway I'm talking about, well, it's going to take a while. This is going to be a long ramp up. It's going to take a long time. And that's taking a long time is on you because you haven't given them the pathway to follow. You haven't given them a workflow. You haven't given them a plan that keeps them focused on priorities and they know exactly how to create success. So if you want this fast, you have to be move-in ready, right? So if your house is still a mess and it needs a lot of cleanup, well, anybody coming in, they'll have to figure everything out and it's going to be slow. So when new hires aren't successful or productive, it's because you don't have, you don't have them set up for success. 
So the other part is, and this is a tough one, and this was the conversation we had with Jim and Ash on the workshop, is when you are hiring for a brand new role that you don't actually know how to execute yourself, well, that's a tough one. That's tricky because you don't know. You hire an expert and you think it'll work, but you still have to set really clear goals and expectations and you have to make sure that there's a really good plan in place that you can follow, that you can check check in on on to really gauge, hey, is this working or not? Because this is where they really missed. They knew what they should do and they didn't do it. They were trusting this expert to get the result done, to get the outcome done. And they trusted them to say, hey, you know what? We don't want to mess micromanage. They're going to do this thing because they're the experts, which is reasonable thinking. But that's also a surefire way to not find out soon enough when it's not working. So you have to set the clear expectations with a plan that gets followed up in and where you have lots of check-ins and it's going to take longer even though, right? So you must understand when you hire for a role that you don't know that you can't support, it will be a longer ramp up time. So if you don't know, if you don't, if you hire for something, you don't know where you can't be the mentor, their success takes longer. It's going to be harder and they're not going to be the heroes who come in like flying, saving you, which is what you're hoping for. But hear this, when this is what you're setting up, make sure you have that clear plan with those clear measurables. You check in on it, you meet with them. This is not micromanaging. This is you making sure that they can actually produce what they said they would produce. And so that you can know rather quickly, is this relationship working or not? Because if it's working, awesome give them more rain. If it's not working, you want to know quickly because that's a lot of your resources wasted. A lot of investment, a lot of time that can knock you back on your behind for a long time and it can take quite a while to recover from. So take this to heart, right? So if you have that gap, if you have that hole you need to fill or if it's broken in your company, if you don't know how to do this thing, you need a really strong supporting structure to help you track and gauge their progress and you have to make the decision when it's not working so that you're minimizing the loss, right? So that's number two. Number three, they need a really good, like your team and any new hire needs a really good compensation plan so that you can incentivize good like the behavior you want to see right so you want to incentivize them to help you drive profit so you want to, you always want to start with one thing that your plan asks for them is what are the three core deliverables like what are they responsible for and you want to connect those deliverables to driving profit for your company you know high performance culture means you're incentivizing behavior that you want to see and everybody on your team is there to drive high performance. So you have to ask yourself when you're designing this comp plan, you know, what will it make, what, what will be really exciting for them? What will make it exciting for them to act, to show up, to go the extra mile, to maybe even do this thing that they've never done before that they're maybe uncomfortable with, maybe even afraid of, right? It's like when you're asking people to sell, a lot of times that produces a really interesting reaction when they're really, really resistant. But part of being on your team means everybody needs to understand that everybody on the team must be selling. Because if they're not, you're losing a lot of profit because you have all these people who could be doing a much better job making sure that your company your your customer is happy and supported and that there's new customers coming in all the time so remember it's like where where comp plan is not everything you need more right you need more than that it's important that everybody is paid well that they're paid fairly that they feel like this is a good fit for them but the other part is they must be supported, they must be challenged, they must be coached so that they feel like 
they're getting more and more valuable, their careers go growing, and this is the best place for them to be. Because if it's just about the money, when somebody else is paying a little bit more, they will bounce. But if they love what they do, they feel uh, adequately or, or appropriately challenged, they feel appropriately stressed, they feel, feel appropriately excited, they feel appropriately in a place where they're growing and where they're always contributing, where they're on purpose and they're valued and acknowledged and loved for what they do, why would they leave, right? So remember that piece when somebody's saying, hey, it's all about the money. It's never. Because humans actually want to be significant. They want to contribute to give them the opportunity and then reward them well. So the other part about comp plan, what I see all the time is, it might have been something that you talked about when you hired them and you know when they whether they understood it or not is a big question they might not have and then nobody ever talked about it again so they completely disconnected from it so when you have a comp plan make sure they actually understand it and make sure they understand how they can impact it how they can have control over it so that they can drive better results and it's something that you talk about on your one-on-ones, you revisit it often, you remind them, you help them understand how it's aligned with company strategy, and you help them focus on this. So this is a really big plus when you have that in place and your new hire can understand how that's working. And then of course, that RQ, that readiness quotient that we often talk about, which is your 30, 60, 90 day plan. So. New hires are basically made or broken generally in the first 30 days. If you're really paying attention, they have a great plan, you will see, are they going to succeed? Are they going to stick? Or is this not going to work out? And again, like I said, you want to know this quickly. You want to know if they're productive and if they can help you drive profit. And for our clients, giving them our Bulletproof Business Growth System is what makes all the difference. And you can watch story after story on our site that talks about how that made the difference between day and night. So you want them to come in with a really solid onboarding plan so that they understand the outcomes they're driving, what they're responsible for, what success looks like. Hey, what does done look like, right? So that also means that you have to establish that plan. You have to train, which is where it falls apart for a lot of businesses. Please don't just push them in the deep end of the pool and hope they'll swim. You have to train them because even if they're coming in as an expert, they're new to your company. They don't know how this thing works in your company. So make sure that you train them, you coach them, support them, and you want to create a knowledge base, a training portal where there's trainings for every role that you hire for repeatedly. So when somebody comes in, they can go through that workshop basically and get trained with that knowledge and then you also want to make sure that they have somebody on the team that they can connect with who can help them go through the training. So you want to make sure that you're able to use that kind of training on every new hire that you have that in place because it will accelerate their results. It will enable them to produce much more quickly. So Think about a new hire kind of like a new client. You need to give them the clarity and the certainty that they need to keep coming back, right? So that they, they know that they're in the right place. You want to envelop them in your culture so that they're going to stick. So that means, like I said earlier, the, the training is really important, but also make sure that they have what we call a culture buddy. So this is somebody on the team who is the poster child for your values, your standards, somebody who is an absolute A player who can help them understand, hey, this is who we are and this is how we do stuff. And that person is so important to really entrench these people in your culture because when they come in, they're insecure, they're vulnerable, they don't want to ask dumb questions. So if they have somebody on the team who's kind of their trusted mentor, 
they can ask those questions, they can be shown the ropes, they're going to click in much faster than if you don't do this. So make sure that they feel like, hey, this is my family, this is my home, I want to be here, and these are all amazing people I want to surround myself with, because that's how they stick, right? So, and this is also how they accelerate in their results production much, much faster, because now they're in the right place, they have the right support, and they have the right focus. So remember that mindset and attitude and team fit is much more important than skills. You can train for this for the skills, and that's why having that culture buddy is so important because they can also report back to you, hey, you know what, Mary is like really showing up, she's doing an amazing job. But there's some gaps here and there, and you might want to see how we can help her address those gaps. So it's a little bit of a both situation. You have somebody who can really be there for them and who can also let you know, hey, there's some gaps we need to address. So we can address them and make things go fa go much, much better. So you have to make sure that you put that stuff in place. And when you're noticing that you new, have a new hire who is slow, in terms of producing results and really showing up, it's probably because you're slow, because you're not giving them what they need, because in the beginning, they're going to be very codependent. And, you know, we, we use something in our company, it's called the four levels of contribution that every single hire goes through. And level one is they're totally codependent. They need you for everything. They need to ask the questions. They cannot produce independent results. Level two is where they start producing independent results. Level three is where they can actually become kind of a coach and mentor and level four. So that's your culture buddy and level four is where they can produce strategic results in the company. But for every single person who's coming on, you have to observe what level they're in, how fast they're progressing from level to level and how you can support them to progress faster because the faster they go, the more profits you're going to have. So it's really tough when you get great new people and you can't get the results out of them that you need because you are the reason really for them to either stay and be successful or bounce. So remember, you know, people don't leave companies, they leave leaders. So if you're not showing up as that new inspired leader who gives them everything they need, well, it's not going to work well. So if you want your team, if you want to optimize your team to produce more profits, if you want to hire the right people on your team to help you produce higher profits and more results faster and upgrade your team all the time, this is just what you must do. So we talked about one, making sure that you have outcome focused job descriptions connected with a clear plan that's connected to your vision where everybody understands, hey, why am I doing this? What am I doing? And how does that impact the whole? Then we want to make sure that everybody has repeatable processes, that you have a knowledge base, that you train, that you can give people the plan that they need to be successful, that you have a good incentive plan to help them really focus on high performance, on productivity, and on producing results. And then you want to make sure that you train, 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 and you produce the culture and the environment that people really need so they can be successful. Now, for all of this, this requires really having one-on-one -on -one meetings, being consistent, meeting with the team every week, looking at your plan every week and working your plan and giving people lots of feedback because that's how they improve in an agile way where you can fix things and support things in a much faster way than you ever thought before. So I hope this was incredibly helpful to you. For those of you who couldn't make it to the workshop this week, I will put the link in the chat so you can still register and then you'll get the replays. You can go on the replays and watch these for the next few days. And if, if what you're talk what we talked about today, what I talked about today, if that resonates with you and you want more detail, you definitely want to watch those replays. Anyway, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week and I will see you next time.